again everyone welcome to another knowledge lesson we have been learning a lot about westward expansion in the united states and we've learned a lot about how people moved around during this time period we talked about robert fulton what were people like robert fulton why were people like robert fulton continually being innovative and designing new means of transportation why were people like robert fulton continually designing new means of transportation during this time. Right, during this time, transportation wasn't as good as it is today. So people wanted to make it better. They wanted to make it faster, cheaper, and easier to travel long distances. What did Robert Fulton invent that helps make travel easier? the steamboat. What were the advantages and disadvantages of traveling by steamboat on canals like the Erie canals or in a covered wagon? Tell me some good things about traveling in a covered wagon and some good things about traveling in a steamboat and some bad things, some disadvantages. The steamboat, some good things were that it was faster and cheaper than other modes of transportation. But could steamboats go everywhere? Just places that there was water. Covered wagons could go anywhere, but traveling by covered wagons was pretty hard. It wasn't an easy journey. How did steamboats, the Erie Canal, and covered wagons increase westward expansion? They gave people more choices and more options to be able to move or travel to the West. All right, my friends, today we are going to learn about a very special form of transportation that existed for a short time during westward expansion. This part form of transportation has to do with communication. If you have a friend or a family member that lives very far away, maybe in another part of the country, or in another part of the world, maybe in a different country, how do you communicate with them? If you want to talk to them, how do you do that? Could you give them a phone call? Could you FaceTime them? Or maybe meet via Zoom or some other kind of online meeting? Could you send them a text or an email? These are the ways we usually communicate, but did those ways of communication exist back in the 1800s when westward expansion was happening? No. Back then, if you wanted to communicate with someone, you had to write them a letter. Our story today is going to be about a special form of transportation that helps people send and write letters to each other and stay connected even after they had moved into the Oregon Territory or other places out west. This story is set in the mid-1800s when many people were just heading west, starting to head west for a new life. Our story today is called the Pony Express. Do you know what the word express means? Express can mean to to talk about or write about something. So when you are writing a personal narrative, you are expressing yourself and explaining what you felt or what you were doing. But express can also mean to do something very quickly or swiftly. We'll have to figure out which definition you think is more relevant to the title The Pony Express. I'll give you a hint though, both of them are pretty relevant. Before we read about the Pony Express today, we're going to go over our vocabulary words. Landmarks. 
Landmarks are objects or structures on land that are easy to see and recognize. The ruins of the Parthenon and the Acropolis are two famous landmarks in Athens, Greece. Route. A route is a way to get from one place to another place. We looked at the map to find the fastest route into town. Venture. A venture is a business activity which is not certain to succeed. Opening an indoor ice park in our town is a new venture for my neighbors. Endurance. Endurance is the ability to go on for a long time despite discomfort or pain. The students needed great endurance to run around the track in gym. Think of a time when you have had to have endurance. I'm going to read a couple of sentences. If I describe someone who is demonstrating endurance or is continuing on despite discomfort, I want you to say that shows endurance. But if I describe someone who is not demonstrating endurance, say that does not show endurance. All right, number one. Even though his legs were tired, Derek pushed on to finish the race. That shows endurance. Kay waited for her puppy to rest at the bottom of the hill before continuing on their walk. In this case, the puppy is not showing endurance. The pony outrun the growling coyotes for many miles. That does show endurance. Lewis and Clark kept going even when they could not find an all-water route to the west coast. That shows endurance. And our last one. Francis slept in on Saturday because he wasn't feeling well. That does not show endurance. In the 1850s, mail delivery was not as fast as it is today. Airplanes had not yet been invented, and neither had cars. Railroads had been invented, but the railroad tracks did not run all the way across the country. Suppose you wanted to send a letter from New York to California over 150 years ago. The railroads could carry your letter from New York to Missouri. That might take a day or two. But the train tracks ended in Missouri. There, your letter would have to be loaded onto a stagecoach, like the one shown here. The stagecoach would be pulled by a team of horses. It would bump along dirt roads at five or six miles an hour. It would almost take a month for the stagecoach to carry your letter to California. In 1860, three businessmen came up with an idea. They thought people would be willing to pay extra to send a letter if there was a quicker way to deliver it. All they needed to do was find a way to speed up delivery time. The idea they came up with was simple. They would have riders carry the mail on horseback and run a sort of relay race from Missouri to California. They figured that a single rider on a fast horse could travel very fast. He could go much faster than a stagecoach loaded with passengers and luggage. They knew that horses and riders would get tired, so the businessmen decided there would have to be rest stations along the way. The Pony Express was not an easy venture to start. Remember, a venture is a business project or activity that is not certain to succeed, so the men were not sure that the Pony Express would be successful. What do you think? Do you think it will be successful? The businessmen who started it had to spend a lot of money to get things set up before they could make any money. They hoped the U.S. government would support them and pay them to be official carriers of the U.S. mail, but there was no guarantee. 
After they decided which roads and trails to use, they had to set up stations along the route. One rider left from California in the west. At the same time, another rider left from Missouri. So riders traveled from both ends of the route to carry the mail as fast as possible. Finally, they had to hire riders and buy fast horses with great endurance for them to ride. The horses were chosen for their speed and their endurance, or their ability to continue on for a very long time. Riders were usually young men, 18 years or younger. They had to be tough and loyal. Riders would ride a leg or small section of this route, changing horses at e each station. Do you think being a Pony Express rider would be an easy job or a difficult and dangerous one? What do you think? This map shows the whole route of the Pony Express. It started in St. Joseph, Missouri, where the train tracks ended. The Pony Express went all the way to Sacramento, California. The thick red line on the map shows the route the riders followed. The pictures above and below the route show some landmarks that the riders rode past. Remember, landmarks are objects in the landscape that are easy to see and recognize. They could be used by the riders to know that they are going on the right route. Pony Express riders had to be ready to jump into the saddle and ride 50 miles on a moment's notice. They rode in the scorching heat of the day. They rode at night by the light of the moon. They rode through rain, hail, and sleet. They galloped across dusty deserts and zigzagged up dangerous mountain paths. They rode across wide open prairie and through large herds of buffalo. There are stories of riders becoming lost in fierce blizzards and having to lead their horses on foot. Native Americans watched these riders and saw as more evidence of an endless flow of people moving onto their land. Not only did a rider have to worry about himself, he had to worry about his horse too. Because the terrain was so varied, a horse could stumble and fall, or it could be spooked by wolves or stampeding herds of buffalo. Here is a photo of a Pony Express station that is still standing today. There were more than 150 stations like this one along the route. The stations were located about 10 miles apart. That was about as far as a horse could gallop before getting tired. They made swing stations where a rider could exchange his tired horse for a fresh one and then continue on the trail. They also had home stations where riders could stay and rest while another rider carried the mill to the next station. The riders waited at their home station until it was time to return with the mail that another rider had delivered. If all went well, this is what would happen. A Pony Express rider would come galloping up. He would jump off his horse. Another rider would be standing in front of the station holding a new horse. The new rider would unhitch the mail pouches from the old horse and hitch them to his horse. Then he would jump on his horse and gallop away. The rider who had just completed his part of the journey would be fed a simple meal of bacon and beans. If he was lucky, there would be some cornbread too. Then he would get some much needed rest. Both riders and station masters tried to save as much time as possible and be as fast as possible to get the mail to the settlers quickly. The horses could move faster if it carried less weight. Here is a picture of another Pony Express station. This one is called Simpson Springs. It is located here in Utah. You can see that this station is surrounded by a desert and there are mountains, mountains rising up in the distance. Can you imagine how hot it could be riding across the desert during the day and how cold it could get at night? And of course, the rider would be moving in a cloud of dust. The men who created the Pony Express were businessmen, and their goal was to make money. They wanted to make sure everybody knew about the service they were providing, so they made posters and ads like this one. 
It cost $5 to mail a letter via the Pony Express, which is the same as about $130 today. Do you think you'd pay $130 to send a letter today? Why do you think people were, were willing to pay so much back then? Today we have lots of ways to communicate for free, but did they have all of those ways to communicate back then? No. In 1860, the American writer Mark Twain took a trip across the United States. He was traveling by stagecoach, but he and his fellow travelers kept an eye out for the Pony Express. In his book, Roughing It, Twain described his first sight of the Pony Express. We had had a consuming desire to see a pony rider, but somehow or other, all that passed us managed to streak by in the night. We heard only a whiz and a hail. The swift phantom of the desert was gone before we could get our heads out of the wet windows. But presently, the driver exclaims, Here he comes! Every neck is stretched further. Every eye strained wider. Away across the endless dead level of the prairie, a black speck appears against the sky. In a second or two, it becomes a horse and a rider, rising and falling, rising and falling, sweeping toward us nearer and nearer, growing more and more distinct, more and more sharply defined, nearer and still nearer. A flutter of hooves comes faintly to the ear. In another instant, there is a whoop and a hurrah from our upper deck. A wave of the rider's hand, but no reply. Then, man and horse burst past our excited faces and go winging away like a belated fragment of a storm. Mark Twain was not the only person who was excited about the Pony Express. Lots of people used the Pony Express to send letters. Unfortunately, the Pony Express did not last very long. This picture might help you understand why. We can see a Pony Express rider in this picture. What do you think those other men are doing? The men on the ground and behind the Pony Express rider are setting up telegraph poles. Once the telegraph line stretched across the country, it changed things. A telegraph is a machine that can send messages over a series of wires in just minutes. People in New York could send telegraph messages to California. A telegraph message could travel from New York to California in a matter of minutes. There was no way the Pony Express could compete with that. The Pony Express went out of business in 1861 after only 18 months of service. Since the telegraph was both a faster and safer way to communicate, people no longer needed the Pony Express. Although the Pony Express did not last long, people still remember the can-do spirit of the founders and the bravery of the riders who carried the mail. This statue of a Pony Express rider carrying mail helps us remember this significant event in American history. In this picture, you can see some rectangles on the side of the saddle. Those are the pouches where the mail was kept. All right, everyone, I have got some questions for you about what we read today. My first question is, why did those three businessmen decide to start the Pony Express venture? They thought they'd be able to make money. They thought that they would be able to make a lot of money by delivering mail to the West Coast faster than what had been previously done by Stagecoach. What was the Pony Express? Explain to me, what was it? It was a system of sending mail by horseback. Who carried the mail? Many young men worked on the Pony Express and rode the horses to different stations. How did they know where to go? 
How did the Pony Express riders know where to go? They had a set trail that they used over and over again that they learned and knew very well, and they used landmarks to guide them, or things on the land that were very distinctive and easily recognizable. Why were the young men, young men who carried the mail required to be small? If they were small, they weighed less, which would allow the horses to run faster. What special characteristics did the horses chosen for the Pony Express meet? Those horses needed to not only be very, very fast, they also needed to have good endurance, which means that they can run for a long, long time without getting tired. Was the route for the Pony Express riders hazardous or safe? It was pretty hazardous. Why was it hazardous? Just like traveling with covered wagons, the weather was a, ha was a hazard. Rough landscape, wild animals, the horses could stumble or fall. There were lots of different dangers on those trails. How was Bill carried along on the Pony Express? Did one rider carry it the whole way? Was it just one rider that ran the whole trail in one go? No, that would be too long and hard for any one rider or one horse. They did it relay style, which means that they would take certain sections of the journey before passing the mail on to the next rider. Was the Pony Express venture successful? For a little while, right? It was successful for 18 months, for a pretty long time, just over a year. But eventually it fell out of success. What made it no longer successful? What happened? The telegraph line across the nation had been completed, which let people send messages in minutes. The Pony Express only lasted 18 months before the telegraph made it easier, cheaper, safer, and faster to communicate from coast to coast. Why do you think people still remember and talk about the Pony Express even though it existed for such a short time? Turn and tell your neighbor or whoever is helping you, why do you think it existed for such, it's still talked about even though it only existed for such a short time? While you're wrapping up that conversation, my friends, I'm going to add our picture of the Pony Express to our timeline. This was used after the Oregon Trail during the year 1860, and it only ran from 1860 to 1861 before the telegraph made it obsolete or unusable. All right, my friends, go ahead and open up the PDF that is attached to this assignment and I will jump on my computer and show you what to do. All right, my friends, on that PDF, there is a bubble map. Bubble maps help us plan things and help us remember the important events of a story. Today we're going to use our bu bubble map to help us remember important things about the Pony Express. I'm going to label it here in the middle, the Pony Express. The center of our bubble map is our main idea or the main thing that we are talking about, which is why I labeled today's the Pony Express. In the bubbles that branch off from this middle section, we're going to write important details or facts about the Pony Express. I want you to see if you can fill in all six of these bubbles with facts about the Pony Express. You might say that the Pony Express 
was very expensive. These do not have to be complete sentences. These can be words or phrases. Remember, it cost $5, which today is equal to $130. So it was very expensive, but people were willing to pay that much because it was the fastest way to have mail delivered across the country. I'm gonna squish that down so it fits in my bubble a little better. I'm also going to remember that the Pony Express was run like a relay race. In a relay race, there are several runners. It's not just one person running a race. It's usually a group of four or five runners where each runner is, is set somewhere on the track and the first runner will run to the second runner and pass off a baton. The second runner will run to the third runner and pass the baton to the third runner and so on until all of the runners have run their leg or part of the race. So it wasn't just one person that was taking the mail across, it was a series of different riders. That's another fact I could write, that it was horseback riders. It wasn't people actually running just on their feet. They were riding on horses. Go ahead and you can use some of my facts if you'd like, but go ahead and fill out your bubble map with six facts about the Pony Express. When you are done, you have all six facts. Remember, they do not have to be complete sentences today. Today, they can be words or phrases. When you are finished, go ahead and turn that one in and you are all done with knowledge today.